wind tension has dropped by around 25% on the 33 compared to the one VD. But a lot of things have changed as well. This is like they've been around for 15 years, so the technology is 20 years old. We've had a massive advancement in um, CNC machining, honing, all that sort of thing is so much more accurate. We have oil retention uh, with through crosshat pattern and everything that's all improved. Ring design is approved. You don't need as much tension as you can, as you were used to have holding against the cylinder wall because the design of the ring has changed to let compression assist holding it against the cylinder wall. So we've been able to drop away a massive amount of friction, but yet still achieve um, the heat transfer that we want. To, chance to, to achieve that heat transfer, it, now that the rings have got thinner with less tension on them, the best way to do that has been through the oil being injected into the bottom of the, you see you have an oil squirt and it shoots it into the bottom of the piston, that piston, that oil then travels around the internal, the, like the internals of the piston, and drops out, goes back to the sump, once again goes pumped back through the oil cooler, the oil cooler transfers the heat into the coolant that's around that cooler and back to the radiator. So we're now relying on a lot more transfer of heat through the oil type cooling of the piston than we ever had through the, um, the ring because we've got a lot less surface area contact to the cylinder wall to transfer that into the water jacket. Hope that's sort of starting to make sense. The hard part has always been people say a forged piston. It's impossible to make a forged piston for your traditional aluminium diesel because we have an oil gallery obviously that we've got to put and we've got to put a steel into insert for that to give the top ring strength otherwise that ring land would just get hammered out and you'd have a, all the associated problems that would come forward with once that come out so what we've done is dropped away to a much smaller skirt clearly we can see that this the skirt area of the piston is dramatically less we know the ring lip width is dramatically less so we've had to rely more on the oil going into the base of the piston to cool it. So we've got to fire a lot more oil up there. The advantages of when you run a steel piston in relation to an aluminium piston, yes, you can, get, um, you can get a lot more strength out of it, but the big thing you can do is the oil gallery. You can run, because the piston is so much uh, stronger than what it has been before, the internal oil gallery that I spoke about in the piston, you can run Here's one I've cut in half, but I'll put a lot more. Uh, I'll put a little photo to the side, hopefully. The way they've managed to achieve, obviously, if the whole piston steel, you don't have to stress too much over your steel top insert that we've had to worry about before. And you can run the gallery that runs closer to, you can run it so much closer to the hottest part of the piston. That lip there, that is the hottest part of the piston. So now we can get that oil gallery right up against it so you can absorb so much more heat in compared to the distance the oil gallery used to be. I mean, 1KDs were the worst for it. 1KDs, people wonder why 1KDs crack pistons. Well, have a look. If you see how far away the oil gallery is from the hottest part of the piston, things will start making sense. So to achieve that, they've done it really clever. They're really clever. Like the inside of the piston, you have a steel, it, it's machined in there, and then you or cast in there. Then you have this steel plate basically just a little bit of plate like that that will then take up around the base to form a gallery which we haven't been able to achieve on an automotive point of view before so your heat transfer through running that gallery so much closer to the hot of the part of the piston has been a massive advancement so we have a much stronger piston with a lot better heat transfer characteristics with a lot less surface area the only downfall of it is it's heavier so it is, tradition, it is a little bit heavier than a, a 1VD piston, but where they've gotten away from that too is that's the gudgeon pin out of a 3.3 a and that's the one out of an FTE. So there's a massive reduction in the size of the pin compared to what it used to be. But also what they've done, which is no one's picked up on, that pin has now has a DLC coating on it. So when you put the pin in the piston, it is so much, so much, better than it was. If you just got it, they just feel, that's a way better, like I do this every day. That is the a massive reduction in friction. You can just feel it, it's so much nicer to use. So there's been steps put in play that to reduce friction, which are not related to clearance. Clearance is, forget about that. You, you're going down the wrong road if you're thinking that clearance is what you achieve to get low friction. So it's important to 
remember that as a as a base because when you start then going to oil usage okay what about oil usage you've got to remember when you're using that oil from underneath the coolant you've got to fire a lot of oil up there so you're pumping as much oil as you can through that internal gallery to pull heat away because you've reduced the ring thickness so you've you've reduced your ability to transfer through to the cylinder wall which is fine with with that also and they're, they're talking about if you, there's a letter obviously which is everyone's carrying on about from none wanting to order in the driving conditions when you load up so much oil in the bottom of the bore. You could get away with it easily on a 1HZ, all that sort of stuff, because they ran an oil restrictor, they ran a, a bucket and shim style cylinder head, which is very basic, and they also run a very tiny oil restrictor in the back gallery of the block. You couldn't put a match through that, not even hope of it. So very little oil gets pumped up into the cylinder head. So oil draining back from the cylinder head doesn't become an issue. You can just run it straight back to the block. When you run a cylinder head like the FTEs, which these are, sorry, not FTE, the 1VD, you're going to a cylinder head which is a lot more efficient, but they run hydraulic lash adjusters, okay? Which you can do a little bit of research into. So they, they are actuated by oil. So you now have to, you can't get away with putting a restrictor in there. Now you have to pump a lot more oil up to the top of the cylinder head because you've got to feed all your lash adjusters, etc., all the rockers and whatnot, in order to um, to, to keep all that lubricated. So you've got a lot more oil coming up. Now that oil has to make it back to the sun. Normally when they run that, they'll run galleries down the side of the block because you do not want that oil coming back down near the crank. Obviously that's more oil to get thrown around, more oil to put up the bottom of the bore than you have had before. And you've got a, an oil ring that now is only two mil wide trying to cope with all that extra oil. The reason I use a little bit of oil to start with is because when you're throwing that much oil up there and you only have a two mil oil control, you're asking the second ring to pick up on what the oil ring leaves behind. So now we run the 1.5 mil second ring. That ring is going to be on the edge of bedding in in that first thousand, sorry, first you know, 20,000, 10,000 gauge, whatever. If you've got a stick a litre of oil in it, big deal. You know, it, you know why, it's just because it's, that second ring hasn't completely bedded in yet. And once it normally beds in, it'll all get sorted out because it's probably going to stop there. So I guess hopefully that sort of gives you a little bit more of an insight into what they're trying to achieve, why you can get better performance out of a smaller capacity engine, what they're trying to do when you, when you drop away uh, low friction. That, that's the big thing. So get rid of friction, still get your heat transfer down, whatnot. Uh, Hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight. I wouldn't worry for a heartbeat. If I had one on order, or was having one that I had to put a little bit of oil in to start with, that wouldn't worry me at all. Clearly we can see there'll be other issues to worry about. Um, but if there's any way I can help, please give me a call. Thank you.